personally, like, if I'm going to fight back against the government, if I'm going to have my arms to prevent tyranny, I need a surface-to-air uh, shoulder-mounted missile because they're going to come at me with helicopters and probably some form of, like, hover planes. I mean, also, the Antifa BOM guys are, have drones now, so we need surface-to-air missiles. I need all that. In fact, I need one that will scatter a bunch of missiles, like, like, like a Patriot missile system. Um, here is uh, Christy Nome. Now, I, I will say in this instance, at least there is some consistency, right? Christy Nome, consistently horrible. Uh, she's on Face the, the Nation with Margaret Brennan. Here we go. I think it's tragic what Nancy went through. And my heart goes out to every single woman who's had to go through that situation. I don't know what that's like. What I would say is that uh, I believe every life is precious. Uh, our trigger law does reflect that if it's to save the life of a mother, that an abortion is still illegal. And we know so much more using technology and science than we did even 10, 15 years ago about what these babies go through, the pain that they feel in the womb. And we'll continue to make sure that those lives are protected. And I just have never believed that that having a tragedy or a tragic situation happen to someone is a reason to have another tragedy occur. So, so no I would exception prefer that we continue to make sure we go forward and that we're putting resources in front of these women and walking alongside them, getting them the health care, the care, the mental health mm -hmm. uh, counseling and, and services that they should need to make sure that we can continue to support them and build stronger families far into the future as well. So no exceptions. You know, this is a debate that's going to continue to happen from state to state, Margaret. Yep. And I think that's what's unique about the United States of America. I love that about this country. Um, did she say uh, there is an exception for the life of the mother? I thought she said that was illegal. We look that up and see. Um, it, but the bottom line is. At least it's consistent. It is a consistent disregard, and she's responding to apparently uh, Congresswoman Nancy Mace, who is a rape victim. There is a consistent disregard for women here. You have been forcibly impregnated. And now, and, and, you know, so what is, what is the, what, let, let's just break this down. She says it's a, it's a tragedy, but we shouldn't have two tragedies. But what is the tragedy? What is that first tragedy? You have been assaulted and forcibly impregnated. And so they're ignoring the other tragedy, which is you are being forced to carry that child to birth. You are being forced to carry that pregnancy to term. Um, Just for historical reference, in 2006, there was a South Dakota abortion ban measure that failed 55 to 45 percent. Uh, South Dakotans chose to not ban abortion in 2006. And uh, the Republicans were able just to pass it. I don't know if there's an exception for the woman's life, but again, even if there is, wh who's providing abortions in that? Um, who's providing abortions? What doctor? How do you determine that a woman's life is in jeopardy? How do you determine it? Is it, is it if there's a 5% chance? Is it if there's a 95% chance they're going to die? 70? 20? 10? And how do you even make that assessment? Because remember now, you're a doctor making this assessment. You need to make this assessment. You've got a couple of hours, maybe in some instances. And maybe there's a percentage that is written into the uh, Oklahoma state law. I don't know. Maybe the doctor needs to believe there's a 55% chance that the woman's life is in jeopardy. At least according to Guttmacher, it, it, uh, it's banned except in cases of um, life endangerment. 
But so, and, and I mean, the, the real question is, what constitutes life right, endangerment? Right, right. And let's just say, I don't know, uh, the courts there determined it's a 45% or 55%. How do you as a doctor make that assessment that you're going, to, and you know that you have to prove that in a court of law? What if it's just, what if the threshold is 45% based on case law? And of course, if there's case law, that means that there's other people who have probably gone to jail because of it. 45% and you're like, this is 43 or 47%. How do you prove that in a court of law? Do you, what do you do as a doctor in that moment? Are you going to risk going to jail for 10 years? Some doctors probably would. We know that some abortion providers have been killed. Certainly threatened. But if you're just, if you're a doctor who's, I don't know how many abortions, uh, you know, every doctor performs. I would imagine not many. And you're faced with this in the moment. Are you going to be like, oh, this is really 38%. I, uh... Yeah, I don't want to deal with that headache. And I mean, this is from the party that um, blames all of our failings of our healthcare system on tort law. And, right, yeah. right. Uh, amazing. For every abortion they perform, it would implicate the federal budget, it seems to me. And but I've heard two things. And then you could you could pass a and certainly having 26 states not ban abortion is going to is going to increase your tax revenues. Um, I've heard two responses to this. I don't know how valid they are. One is that you cannot create a new tax in reconciliation. You can only change existing taxes. I don't know if that's true. The other is that the parliamentarian may just see it as what it is, is a scheme to get a policy in there, but I don't know. Then you know what you could do? You could vote to overrule the uh, parliamentarian, which George Bush did for the, to protect the traditional American right for rich people to have lower taxes. That's when they fired their parliamentarian. That's the thing, like when you listen to those two activists up top talk about, you know, I don't want to hear about from the Democratic Party. And I, I do think like, look, there's a way that certain pro GOP people emphasize that to basically like demoralize people. Right. right? Um, but it is true. Like the Democrats can't be like effing around with this parliamentarian stuff and then still telling people like, oh, but vote for us in November. Like those sorts of things. There has to, there can't be status quo. There can't be, we're going to go down and um, robocall for Cuellar because he's an incumbent. Like you got to change, you got to change operating. Yep. And, and, and to the credit of those two activists, they were like, we need to elect more progressive Democrats. And, 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 and the thing is, is that I think they are widely representative, representative, those two of, of their generation. Yeah. And which is not to say I don't want emails that not quite boomers like myself, specifically Gen Xers, but also boomers and even the greatest generation, that there aren't people in those generations that have a good political perspective. But when we talk about the majority of those generations, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to all of us.